Uh, so um, thank you very much, Andrew, for the introduction uh, and the kind of promotion. Uh, my name is Sandy McKinnon. I'm one of the directors and co-owners here at Food Story. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about the, the reduction of, of um, waste, um, particularly in our sector, but kind of across the whole sectors, um, and how that should or could become the kind of business norm. Um, for those of you who don't know um, Food Story, um, we're based in Aberdeen. Um, and we sort of believe that community should be at the heart of what we do. Um, FISTO was set up um, by the community in 2013 through a successful crowdfund, um, where we wanted to create a place to bring people together, um, to, to gather, to share food, um, to relax and escape for a moment, um, and a place where everyone can kind of feel welcome. Uh, since then, or kind of eight years in, although I think it's eight years, I'm not good with COVID because COVID's kind of a year I've just kind of wiped off. But um, since then, we are another large cafe on Thistle Street. Um, uh, in addition to that, we now have a whole food shop uh, upstairs, which has a large zero waste section. And uh, we also have an event space, a large commercial kitchen where we make everything in our cafe from scratch, uh, from our dressings and cakes, um, right up to you know the, the main kind of salads and uh, stuff you get during our lunch and dinner menu as well. And our newest addition uh, to the cafe is our new garden seating area, which we now have at the back. Um, in addition to this uh, cafe, um, a couple of years ago, we have a sister cafe at the University of Aberdeen, and it's uh, called Food Story Zero. And it's primarily probably the reason that I've been asked to do this sort of day, because it is the first zero waste uh, cafe and zero packaging cafe in Scotland. Um, and in addition to that as well, we also have um, the two of our trailers as well. So we've got a, a converted horse trailer and we've just purchased our second trailer, which we will be converting for future projects as well. Um, in those eight years, um, we have won a few awards. Um, and I just want, I never get a chance to talk about them, so I thought I'd just use this opportunity to boast. Um, but uh, we won uh, Best Vegetarian Restaurant in Scotland in 2017 by the Scotsman. Uh, and this year we got voted in the top five for the best veggie and vegan places uh, to eat in Scotland, and that was by the Independent. Uh, and again, relative to kind of this conversation, uh, we won it's the BII Awards in 2019 for Environmental Sustainability Operator. The, if anyone doesn't know what the BII is, it's the British Institute for Innkeepers. So basically, it's pubs and hotels and all this kind of stuff. We don't have an alcohol license. We technically shouldn't have been in that, but what they wanted to do was they created a new category that year and they used us. It's almost like, um, you know, like at the Oscars or, or at the BAFTAs, they always get a Lifetime Achievement Award. It was something like that where we had already won because they wanted to use us as an example for future um, organizations as well. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I realized that I haven't actually pushed my presentation properly. My mouse is not working properly. There we go. Yep. Um, I'll just leave it. Um, but uh, to the, in today's presentation, I really wanted to talk about it's not why it's it's not just why you do it. Sorry, it's more important about the why and why you do it than what you do. Um, and that's the, primarily the focus. And then also talk about food story itself and what we have done, the pros and cons of that as well. Uh, and then I've done a little few top tips for home, um, just for everyone else. Um, so I'll get cracking. I'll just take this presentation off if I can. Oh, it's clean now. There you go. So that was just to give you a wee insight. There's food story there for you guys. Um, if anyone hasn't been, uh, that's myself on the one the less here. And the other person there is my business partner, Laura Bishop. So I'll give her a big shout out because she never gets a mention. Um, right, there we go. So, um, so if everyone can see me okay, I'll crack on. Um, right, so I just want to point out at this point um, that I am the expert. Um, Obviously, we're here today to tell you about what we have learned over the course of um, you know, the last eight years, and particularly when we started focusing on our environmental impact and, and that kind of focus. And we do also understand I have two children of my own now, but like, each child is different. And the same goes for businesses and individuals. Um, everyone is different and everyone is unique and everyone has their own challenges and their own ways in which they can do better. Uh, with regards to the environment. So these are just observations from myself um, and the team here at Food Story, and we just wanted to share that with you and then kind of explore what we have done uh, as a cafe. So 
to start off, when we talk about reducing waste, um, we kind of, it has to be easy. I mean, we always talk about, um, you know, about food waste. Uh, we talk about, you know, reducing our carbon footprints and our emissions and everything else. But as society has kind of shown, convenience is key. And, and we like things that make our life better. And that's the way society has been going, you know, for at least the last hundred years, if not longer. Um, and a good example of this is the car. Um, the reason I mentioned the car is um, for people to suddenly go, right, that's having a bad impact on the environment. We need to go back to public transport or something else. The, the chances are the majority of people would not accept that because they've been given the freedom and the mobility of a car. And therefore, reducing that and taking that away is not really the option because you're taking away that freedom and that mobility. So where the challenge comes for organizations and governments is to, to keep that, that freedom and that mobility that the car offered, but use that in an environmentally friendly way. So an example you'd see that now is the, the electric car movement or the alternative fuel car movement as well. And that's, that's kind of, that kind of approach kind of stands for pretty much everything. Um, when it comes to society change in general, we believe that it has to be government or company led, as well as obviously individuals doing the small, small changes that they do at home or on their daily lives, that will have an impact. But if it is government or company led, the impact can be much greater um, because of the outreach and the, and the power that they have. Um, for the two examples I'm going to give um, it is for the Scottish government. And I please just want to know, I'm not having a go at the Scottish government. I'm just using them as an example mainly because the Scottish government declared just before COVID um, that um, climate emergency was something that they were accepting and that they were going to review this every year and it's going to be part of their policy, their core values. And in 2045, there was the aim to have Scotland as net zero. So with this campaign in mind um, and this, this, this philosophy and core value that's been instilled by the Scottish government, I thought this was a prime example of an example where companies are stepping forward or organizations are stepping forward but are not necessarily following it through and um, i'll give you an example which is the plastic bag scheme in 2015 uh, it was a uk-wide uh, scheme um, to reduce our plastic bag consumption in supermarkets and uh, actually overnight 95 percent of the, the population or the, the amount of bags we use in supermarkets was reduced um, but now we're running on now what six six seven years from that um, and you'll notice that you'll think twice about, it's like wearing a mask, you'll, you'll go, oh, I forgot my bag, and you'll go back to your car to get the bag. Uh, or if you forget a bag, you're like, oh, you know what, I'll just, uh, I'll just put it in my pocket so I can carry it. You know, using a bag now in the supermarket, it feels like, A, it's, it's, you think twice about what the social impacts will be and the environmental impact will be on that. But also, um, you just don't know where to store them anymore because we don't really use them as much. Um, so that was a societal change that came from a government-led campaign. But the reason I use this is I wanted to kind of go into a little bit more detail where this is where it goes wrong. So if we establish that the Scottish government has stated they have a climate emergency and they've declared that the climate is the, one of their main focus points of their policies. The Plastic Bad campaign, which obviously came out before then, but now is part of that, is showing that that is one of the steps of doing board. My point that I'm trying to make here is that unless that is filtered through for every aspect of the company, it doesn't really work fully because you're then doing other things that are contradicting yourself. So an example of that would be recently a fantastic campaign that was uh, put through the Scottish government, which is the, the period poverty campaign, that uh, period um, products should be made free to all um, who need them which is fantastic. But my point is that they should have linked that to the core value, which is environmental impact. So it should have been, we are making everything for free, but also the caveat to that is they have to be encouraged or forced to be recycled materials, reusables, all that sort of stuff. It should have gone down that route, which is then tied into their, their core value. Um, I'm going to do a wee name drop here, but um, a wise man once said to me, which is um, Brian Snelling, who's the, the CEO at the Aberdeen Science Centre. I used to work for him over 10 years ago. And the one thing that he taught me, amongst many, is that uh, your core values and your purpose should always guide your organisation and it should reflect in everything you do. So with that in mind, if your core value is you know, climate, then everything that you do should then be challenged back to that point. Does this, does this improve our environmental impact? Does it improve our waste? 
that sort of thing. And it goes down from your energy output all the way down to what food you're serving in your cafeteria for your staff and customers. Um, so that's kind of the, the notion that we were trying to take as a company. So here at Food Story, um, we believe it's not what you do, it's why you do it. And that those core values should be reflected throughout the, the company. Um, but believe it or not, our purpose actually and our core values aren't actually related to environment at all. Uh, instead, uh, we're all about community. So how we do this is obviously through our cafe spaces, our events, our whole food shop, social media engagement, our staff training, um, as well as our kind of approach to business. What we do is obviously seasonal plant-based mainly menu, our coffee, our community events, and staff that we have, and, and our customers that are in the cafe. But where the climate stuff comes into our business is because we, we focus on community. Food Story sits in a, in a community, whether it's our local community on Bizzle Street or in the west end of Aberdeen, or if it's bigger in what we represent with our menu and what we resent for the core value that I mentioned earlier. Because at the end of the day, Food Story has a responsibility within that community and how it shapes it. Um, what we try to do is we go back to that car uh, analogy at the start as we try to um, make small changes within our business that make it easy or feel normal for a customer to actually have an impact on the environment in a positive way by simply buying a cup of coffee, having lunch, that sort of thing. So we've been doing small changes behind the scenes to make sure that our cafe is slowly progressed and become a more environmentally conscious cafe. And the purpose of obviously the, the talk today and the main focus of probably why I was asked is uh, in 2018, we set up a cafe called Food Store Zero, as I mentioned earlier, at the University of Aberdeen. It's the first zero waste and zero packaging cafe there uh, in, in Scotland. And the challenges from that were quite difficult um, because what happens is we set up the cafe and we're like, right, we're going to set it from scratch. We're going to be, its real focus is going to be on reducing its carbon footprint, uh, reducing packaging to zero. Um, and reducing as much waste as possible. What then happened from there is we then had to break down our, our supply chains and actually challenge the suppliers to adhere to the certain criteria that we have. So an example of that would be um, coffee. Um, most people, uh, most cafes, when you buy coffee, it comes in big retail bags or, or, or smaller bags. Um, they are recyclable, which is great. Um, but as we know, it's a lot of recyclable stuff. It takes ages to recycle. Um, where we were challenging is can we get big massive tubs or vats that are vacuum sealed so that we can actually hold the coffee for ages, keep it fresh, and therefore we're just packaging all together. So two companies uh, that we work with, Obadiah and Coffee Roasters and Deer Green, and Deer Green particularly took this on board uh, and ran with our patent, I think they've actually painted in their own tubs. They came up with this concept and now it's now being dished out throughout Scotland, um, these containers. Um, excuse me. <coughs> in addition to that, obviously our milk as well. Normally you get plastic milk that comes in, and then you, you finish the milk and you then get rid of it. Uh, we looked at the plastic bottles. It was very difficult, not plastic bottles, glass bottles. It was very difficult for us to find a supplier that did that, but we've now found a supplier. And as a result, our glass bottles are taken away every evening, and then we get new glass bottles every day full of milk. Um, and then obviously the, we do a takeaway deposit scheme where you encourage people if they forget their own their reusable uh, cups and everything else, they can then do a deposit scheme and bring it back. And everything else. We also have a sit-in section so that kind of alleviates a lot of the kind of packaging um, issues as well. And the pros of that, well, the pros really are, it reduces a lot of waste. Um, we don't have any bins at Food Series Zero at all, except for one food waste bin, which is only picked up once a month. Um, and it's never even full. Uh, you reduce your running costs as well by doing this over the long run because you don't have any packaging costs. Um, you, you manage your supply chain in such a way that you're not wasting anything. So everything that you've brought in is being used. Um, if people are doing takeaway, obviously it goes for just takeaway as well, but you reduce the dishes, um, but you don't have any packaging, as I say. So we make these small changes, but they actually have a big impact, um, and that can change the, the community that we're in. Uh, the cons of this, well, um, the initial startup costs are huge because you have to invest in these different um, supply chain methods. That means that you have to buy in advance or put deposits down in these tubs, um, or you have to buy things in bulk uh, to start with to then bring it into your, your site. 
So there is a huge uh, initial startup cost. Um, but the other one is you, you lose customers. Um, when we started in 2013, uh, we focused that we were mainly going to be vegetarian and vegan. And we were the first cafe in, in Aberdeen to do so. So we turned away customers. And people were coming in asking for their bacon rolls and, and all this sort of stuff. And we're like, I'm sorry, that's, that's not what we do. Um, but we stuck to our core values. And then eventually we started to get following. Um, but in Food Story Zero, that challenge is even bigger because people might not get it. Or they might just be in Aberdeen Uni for the day and they don't have a cup and they don't want to do a deposit scheme because, well, they're not going to bring it back. Uh, and so there are challenges associated with that. Um, but there's a, there's a famous talk about a bell curve. I think probably a lot of people may know this, but you know a bell curve does, does this. And you get your, your early majority, sorry, you get your early first adopters, you get your early majority, your later majority, and your laggards. Now, all companies get the first responders, the, the early adopters. They get those people straight away because they just get the business. The challenge is getting to the early majority. And then from the early majority, the, the, the later majority will follow. Um, and with zero, it's starting to get that way. And in fact, um, to try and make it the norm, which is what we're trying to do, and make it easy for people, the University of Aberdeen have now stated that as of this year, they are taking packaging off their campus. So it will just become the norm at Aberdeen University that this is now the way that we, we do things. So that will then suddenly make it a little easier. And one of the other challenges with Zero um, is, except for breaking down the kind of business model, which is a bit of a minefield, is there, although you're reducing waste and you're reducing your carbon footprint in that sense, you do have higher travel costs because the packaging that you bring, or the not packaging, but the things that you bring in in bulk which then gets shipped back. So the glass bottles get shipped back, the coffee containers get shipped back, and then they got burned again. So they're reused loads and loads of times, but they travel double the distance that they would have done if they were getting disposed of. So that's a challenge, and it's kind of a weird, you know, it's kind of like two two edged sword. Which is which? Which side is is better to kind of focus on? And again, that kind of probably that's probably up for debate. The other thing, which links back to my Scottish government kind of rant earlier, was environmental health hate it because it's not something they're used to and it's not something they've been told to focus on. So as a result, not for them, they come in, you have to then explain to them the policy, the process and what happens with everything. And then they have to go away and work out and figure out what, what the rule is on that. Because a lot of stuff is kind of, you know, if you're using recycled materials, or well, what's, you know, it's not new, so they, they don't really know where it's to stand on it. They are getting better at that. But again, that took them a wee while to kind of get on board. I'm um, just going to the time as well, so I'll, I'll kind of crack on. But since Food Story Zero's creation um, in 2018, we have been bringing the stuff that we learned from, from the sister cafe and tried to bring it back to Food Story as a company. And then as a huge company, we're now trying to, to look at ways in where we can reduce our waste significantly across the board. Uh, how we've been doing that here is we have a zero waste uh, shop, um, which is just above the cafe if, if everyone's been inside. Um, and we buy a lot of things in bulk. So uh, normally when you buy stuff in, you might know, get in a kilo bag, we get them in 25 to 50 kilos and they come in on pallets and then we can then distribute them out in zero waste containers. And the coffee containers have now been brought into both sites, which has been great. We, instead of um, having a deposit scheme on the cups, we actually have a, an incentive scheme for if you bring in your own reusables, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, clean film, I know that sounds kind of a petty thing, but we don't use clean film here anymore. And we just use tubs and everything is dated and, and sealed with them. Portion control, that stops our food waste as best we can. I mean, most of everything over the last uh, year, uh, while we've been in uh, lockdown, we've been using the time to, to actually work out what is the exact measurements of our portions. And nothing goes to waste there. Uh, we've negotiated with our veg suppliers and so nothing comes in plastic. Everything comes in large boxes. And then the veg supplier, when they come for the next lot of veg, they're supposed to take the carbon boxes away. There is a bit of a discussion there, and they, they have a wee fight, but they eventually do take it away. And food story currently has been classed as 95% waste recycle from our bin supplier. But I'm not really sure what that means, but they have said that. But um, we know that like our food waste goes to compost sites, and, and it's, re, it's used in fertilizers and stuff like that. And, and then most of our stuff is in um, mixed recycling and glass. But, Again, the fact that we work with these companies and we try and improve is one of the way we feel that we should be working towards that. Um, kind of for the future, well, we, we're, 
as I said earlier, nobody's perfect. So, and at Food Story, we're far from perfect uh, with regards to this. Um, we're just we're just kind of finding our, our way. Um, and again, as I said, I'm not I'm not preaching to anyone. I, I'd rather just say what we do, so you can take away from what you want. Uh, and we are just striving to do better. So we we're going to continue with that process and reduce. Um, our food waste where we can. We're also looking at incentives where we can reuse the food waste. Um, and that's something that is, we're kind of in discussions with a few wee groups uh, regarding that. Uh, we're not really sure how that's going to work out, but again, it's something that we're interested in. Um, currently, we've only got one vehicle in the company, but uh, and it's used for towing, but we are looking if we have a secondary vehicle uh, to make that electric. And then we're looking at getting more products that we will buy in bulk um, or have 100% recyclable. Uh, packaging when they come in as well and so that's kind of really it for me the only thing is the top tips for home again I said I'm no expert and I'm also not the best person for this so um, the things that I do at home um, which you know everyone else is more welcome to take on board or not but we don't use clean from at home either but we use a lot of jars and tubs mainly because I, I take them from here if they, you know once they can finish and we reuse them here as well um, but I use them to store the bulk stuff in the so chickpeas and nutritional yeast or uh, any kind of rice, they all get put away into these packaging. Because we get everything here, it's zero waste. We just take it, we just fill up our jars and go. Um, meal plans, I'm not the best at this, I have kids, so it's kind of a, a discussion or an argument with the kids as to what they're eating, but we try and set meal plans so that nothing goes to waste. Um, and then we make all our food from scratch really at home, so uh, again, that kind of means you can plan your meals better. Um, but the one thing that we have done, and we keep moving house, which is becoming a bit more of a challenge, but um, is making space for recycling. Because once we had the, the proper bins that we bought, so our house didn't come with bins that we rent, it was a bit bizarre, but we got bins and we bought bins that had these big recyclable sections in them. So suddenly everything becomes so much easier for recycling. Whereas before you kind of like, well, that has to go in a bag outside and that will have to go into this kind of box over here. And, and it's a bit more of a faff taking it outside then to the bins. You want it somewhere in the house that you can store it and then easily just take it to the bin um, when you're ready to go. So that's kind of it really for me. Uh, I believe there will be some uh, questions and answers um, for yourself. And I think Andrew will be, will be dishing that out. But I just wanted to thank everyone for your time and for, for listening to my, my rants this morning or this afternoon. And I appreciate your time and thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Sandy. That was uh, that was great, um, and I can say, like, I, I've been to the food story, and the food is really good. So I, I do recommend that everyone goes along and uh, and tries it out. Uh, it's it's absolutely great. Um, so, well, one of my questions I've got is, what do you think has been the most surprising benefit from trying to go zero waste? Um, the most surprising benefit is it is actually cost effective. Um, because you start it off with the kind of core principle of we are doing this for a reason. This is why we're doing it. And then we kind of create what we do to, to achieve that. So that's your main goal. So the kind of reduction in cost is not something that's really, that's just a result of that goal. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a surprise to us because you, although I say those initial startup costs are quite high, but as time progresses, your outgoings are, are fairly reduced. So, so you are saving in the long run. Um, if you manage your, your waste well, um, so that has been a surprise. Um, but again, it's it's you know it's an investment at the start, and then it pays off later on down the road. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can definitely see that being appealing for quite a lot of people. If you know you make the the first investment, get used to it, and then you can you know kind of move forward. Um, yeah, I mean, even well, as a customer, if you have like takeaway cups and everything else, you you tend to find that a lot of places now will give you cheaper. You know, if you bring a coffee cup, your own coffee cup, you tend to get cheaper coffee. Um, you know, and, and companies do see that packaging costs a lot. So if you go to a company that has a lot of packaging and takeaway and you bring your own, if they're up to it, then they'll probably be very happy because you're saving them money as well. Great. Well, uh, if there are any questions that anyone in our audience has, just, you know, pop them in the chat or if you're happy to, you know, unmute yourself and you can just uh, you can just ask. Uh, Oh, we've got we've got a couple of comments, uh, I think. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so Josephine saying thank you for the great talk, Sandy. Uh, with community at the heart of your business, has your community changed since you started implementing environmental changes across your business, and have you lost or gained any? 
And so I think for for Food Story Zero, I mean, the other thing to kind of <clears throat> highlight is Food Story Zero has been shut since March 2020 and currently isn't reopened. Um, so COVID has provided a challenge for that because I think the reusable aspect it will become more challenging as as we're kind of kind of navigating that road. Um, but I think at the start we really did struggle with um, with customers who just didn't get the Food Story Zero model, um, and we we were very much conscious at the start that we probably were losing about two hundred pounds a day, maybe maybe more um, on sales because people would come in. I don't really get it, and then they would go. And the thing is, like what we learned from the first time is you've got to stick to your guns. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And, and your your model, you know, was wrong and just move on. And and we stuck to our guns. But then the second year Food Story Zero was open, it was a completely different, you know, change. You know, people were really starting to bring their own tubs. Someone even came in with a plant pot to get a coffee. You know, it was clean. But, you know, I mean, there was some extremes. But, uh, it's you know, so people would start to get it. And then with the main cafe, I mean, we don't really, you don't really see the changes that we make behind the scenes at the main cafe, mainly because it's sit in. Um, so you, again, I was trying to say we want to make it as easy as possible and feel like the norm. So I don't think customers really get to see the benefits, but they'll 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 have the benefits because obviously it will have an impact. You know, from just buying a cup of coffee, but they won't necessarily see them as such because it should just be like just buying a cup of coffee. Um, but if you ever see the baristas, they put the, the beans obviously in the hoppers, but they, you'll see the big canisters next to them. That's where the coffee's in. It's vacuum sealed. It's amazing. And you just, it makes them airtight. So the coffee never goes off. Fantastic. Um, oh, we've got another question from Fiona. So do you grow any of your own, for example, salads? So we have an allotment uh, down at the Tory Battery, um, which we've had for five years. Um, and what we do is we we were going to grow, originally we were going to focus on just rockets and stuff like that because we use it almost every day. But the problem is that the cafe goes through so much of the food that we would clear out the allotment in a day and then that'd be it done. So what we do in the allotment instead is we focus on kind of smaller things like chilies, which we will put into our dressings. Um, in the summer, we do edible flowers. Um, we have been trying to sell them before in the shop. So if you've ever been in the shop, you can come up to the shop and we'll have edible flowers that you can you can put on cakes or you can put on salads. And um, so we focus more on the kind of micro herb things that we can use in our dressings rather than the big products because they would they would go out quite quick. Um, but yeah, that, that's what we do. But yeah, we do grow our own stuff, and we do actually even in our new garden at the back. It's not really a garden; it's made of wood mainly. But you've got bay leaf trees, um, you've got um, all different herbs. So even if you're there. I've got thing rosemary and we've even got lavender. So if you're down, everything that you see, and except for the big tall plants, the bamboo, but everything else you see um, is edible. So if you're down there, you can just pop along and, um, you know, take some really. It's free. Take That's a great. And obviously a great way to, you know, another way of reducing your waste just really, really well. Um, so uh, do you have any big goals for the future? I mean, obviously, COVID's been such a big obstacle that I guess just managing to get, you know, everything uh, back to a version of normal. But uh, yeah, what, what's the next big goal for Food Story? Um, well, believe it or not, this sounds a really odd thing to say, but we, we didn't get any government grants in 2020 at all, except the furlough scheme. So it was a bit hairy, as it were. But we really enjoyed it um, because it was a challenge. And what COVID did was it brought the team together so like you had staff who were, we had staff on furlough, we had staff that were working. And the staff that were working were working to save the business for the staff who weren't working. And the staff who weren't working appreciated the fact that people were working in the business to keep them in, jo in the job. And we didn't fire anyone during the whole process, uh, which was amazing. But what we loved the most was it gave us time to think. So Food Story, uh, excuse me for the, the rubbish, can, that's not really a pun, but it's a bit corny, but because it's a story, chapter one of Food Story, we feel is now completed and COVID has kind of finished that off for us. And then chapter two is kind of where we're taking the business forward. So our plans for the future is um, more community. We, we did a lot of deliveries last year. We reached out to um, the Shire. Um, and although we were always thinking, oh, maybe we should set up another cafe somewhere else. What we've actually realized is, you know, our community is Aberdeen, it is 
it is a shire. Obviously, we have a lot of followers around, you know, UK and Europe and around the world, but we should focus on our local community. So that's the kind of focus there. We're also focusing on, as I mentioned earlier, about um, eventually converting vehicles to electric. We're in discussions about solar panels for the future, for the building. We don't actually own the building, but we've got really nice landlords, so I'm sure they'll be open to that. We're just looking slowly at, at making our business more sustainable. Um, and they're also focusing more online and engaging more online. So our focus now is um, recipe blogs, um, even travel blogs. We want to kind of link up with, we, we miss people and we miss travel, you know, and we, we would love to, to just pop over to Berlin for the weekend or we'd love to just go down to, you know, Dundee or Glasgow or anywhere. And, and so we want to we wanna link up with people abroad. So rather than we ask traveling, if anyone does travel, we will create a, a kind of blog based on that where we recommend places that are kind of a similar ethos to our business. So there's a few projects going, they're mainly in my head, but um, once they're on paper, that will be a bit more. Um, best. Oh, that's really exciting. Uh, so uh, Florence is asking, have you considered converting some of your food waste into some kind of fertilizer for your allotment? So we did that in 2019 until they told us to bugger off. Um, because they were getting so much of it that they couldn't, they couldn't house it anymore. Um, what we do at the minute is we are, the allotments have been a bit strange because of COVID. Again, it's, it's quite difficult to work down there, um, although everyone's kind of in their own section. But what we have been doing is we're speaking to a company at the minute, we're not really a company, we're a startup, and they're looking at um, turning food waste into a product. Um, mainly, they're looking more at the fruit based things, I think, in particular. But they want to turn that into alcohol. Um, so we're looking at ways in which we can use our food waste and use it again effectively. Um, again, there's challenges with that, and there's a lot of work that will have to be done with environmental health. And we're not sure how sustainable it is for them to do that. But if they are able to achieve it, we will be there to help them with that. Um, but again, we are we, we we do link up with the allotments across the city, um, and you know we have offered our food waste to them before. Some of them take it, some of them don't. Um, but our food waste gets picked up by a company and it gets taken up to, I think it's north, it's near, it's near Murray, but it's in, in the Aberdeenshire area. And then it's put into compost anyway and then distributed out locally. So Fiona's recommending that you just start trying to grow some mushrooms in uh, the coffee grounds. Yeah, yeah. So we actually, um, that's a great show because we actually, uh, we built this, uh, we got these little crates we got from our bread supplier that are wooden. And rather than giving them back, we kept them and we made a wall. It actually just looks like rubbish at the minute. But the idea would be that we'd fill them up and layer them and we can grow mushrooms in it. So it'd be a, uh, like a living wall. Um, and that's what we've been trying to do. We just haven't got around to actually finishing it yet. We are still working on our outside garden area. We're obviously trying to get um, money to, to do these things. because Everything's costing a lot. And with the business, obviously trying to survive COVID, you know, we're watching the pennies really closely. So we're doing things in small steps, but we have started it. We just haven't been able to, to kind of finish it off. But I would like to, I don't know when mushrooms, I don't know if mushrooms can grow all year round, but hopefully we haven't missed it for this year. But for some reason, I think October is a good reason. But hopefully we'll, can, we can do something in the summer anyway. So uh, if you want to sing, they'll be fine. So uh, <laughs> great. Um, well, uh, if anyone's got any more questions, just post them. If not, I think that might be us for today. But uh, can I just say thank you so much, Sandy. I thought that was really, really interesting and uh, and really inspirational as well. And uh, I think I'm definitely going to have a look and see what I can do to reduce my waste. And uh, I'll definitely be uh, over to, to see your garden and uh, try some of your food again. Um, thank you for everyone who has come along and asked questions and uh, and watched as well. Um, this will be going on to YouTube, so please uh, share it once it, it finally gets uh, you know uploaded. And uh, and thank you so much, everyone.